Would you join us in the classroom? And how about you? Are you going to join our class? Good morning, class. Please, sit down. I am your new teacher, Miss Stacy. I want to begin by saying that I, I think it's most unfair that the teacher should always have to ask all the questions. And I'm hoping that you'll be enthusiastic enough about my classes that you will pepper me with questions. I shall do my very best to live up to the standards you were used to under Mr. Phillips. <laughs> but... I caution you, I am unfailingly strict about punctuality and attention in class. However, I do believe that the best teacher serves as a guide. And I promise you that if you are willing to put yourself under my guidance, I shall do my utmost to help you form strong ideals ideals which will be the foundation of your future lives. I want to look back on this class as being the brightest, the most imaginative, the most committed students on Prince Edward Island. Please remain after class, Anne. I'd like to have a few words with you. I'm disappointed in you, Anne. Reading novels during geometry class is a misuse of your time. Moreover, it's a deception. Can you ever forgive me, Miss Stacy? I promise I won't even look at Ben-Hur for a whole week as penance, not even to see how the chariot race turned out. I'm returning this to you because I know I can trust you not to let it happen again. Oh, Anne, you know I want to encourage you to read literature, to, to develop your imagination. It's a precious gift, but not during geometry class. Miss Stacy, I knew you were sympathetic to the human plight the minute we met. I understand you have a plight of your own. Diana Barry, we were bosom friends. But alas, her mother's refused to even let her speak with me. Yes, I've had a visit from Mrs. Barry. I can understand the social persecution of being an orphan. But it is a terrible injustice to be falsely accused. Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth, Anne. You see, it frightens them, so they put up walls to protect themselves from it. What we must bear in mind is that all these trials and tribulations that pop up in our lives, well, they serve a very useful purpose. They build character, as long as we can hold on to the lessons we've learned from our mistakes. Remember, you can always start everything afresh tomorrow. That is a tremendous consolation, Miss Stacy. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is always fresh with no mistakes in it. Well, with no mistakes in it yet. 
<laughs> as far as the truth goes, don't lose heart. Diana will always be your friend. No matter what anyone accuses you of, in the end, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. Did you bring the pudding? Excuse me for a minute, Marilla. There's something I've got to check outside for a moment. What do you have to check? Oh, that girl. We should have the plum pudding without the sauce. Whatever before. I've never served it without the sauce. I forgot to put the cheesecloth over it last night. I was imagining I was a nun on my way to the altar to take the vows. Well, then you were lucky that the mice had sense enough to stay away from it. Oh, goodness gracious. Who could that be now at this hour just before supper? Good evening, Miss Cuthbert. Well, I was just over at the Barry's, and, well, I thought I'd take the opportunity to stop by. What has she done now? I hope the scuffle with Diana Barry has made her neglect her studies. No, 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 not at all. Quite the contrary. Anne is doing simply excellent work, which is why I'm here. I wondered, would you permit her to join a special class? You see, I intend to give extra classes after school for those students who intend to take the entrance exams at Queen's. The college in Charlottetown. RN. She's bright and energetic and, well, very determined. I think that she could pass for a teacher or even go on to the university. Well, I've, I've always thought that a girl should learn to make a living. It's a very insecure world. Well, of course she can join the class if she wants to. Oh, that is wonderful. Why don't you uh, stay for supper? I'm just about to set the table. Oh, no, no. I, I, really, I couldn't impose. Oh, stuff and nonsense. You wouldn't be imposing at all. And then you could tell Anne all about it yourself. Well, all right. That was a delicious dinner, Miss Cuthbert. Oh. Thank you, Miss Stacy. Anne actually made this plum pudding herself. Oh, really? Well, I can hardly wait to taste it. Oh, please, do. Don't eat it, Miss Stacy! Anne, what is wrong with you? A mouse drowned in the sauce, Marla. I was working up the courage to tell you when Stacy came in. Um, um. Anne, if you intend to go for a teacher, you're going to have to give up your feather-brained ways. You're not interested in anything but your silly daydreams and nothing else. I really am trying to overcome my faults, Marilla. I know I chatter on far too much, but if you only knew how many things I want to say and don't, give me some credit. <laughs> I suppose in the end it was a romantic way to perish. 
Or a mouse. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Diana. Thank you, Miss Taylor. You're welcome. Aren't you going to be in the Queen's class? Mother says I should concentrate on learning to run a household instead of poring over books so much. Oh, Diana, I feel as though you've tasted the bitterness of death. Class, let's start with the Latin verbs. We'll move on to the algebra after that. Please open your books at page three. Sure, you get Matthew's meals on time, and I should be home tomorrow before supper. Have a lovely time. Do you think you'll meet the Prime Minister? Oh, if Rachel has anything to do with it, we'll more than meet him. He shall be subjected to a lecture on the ills of Prince Edward Island, the country, and the world, in that order. Good. Bye. <laughs> Mrs. Lynn says the country's going to the dogs, the way the government runs things. Do you think that's true, Matthew? Rachel Lynn is a grit. She says, if women were allowed to vote, we would soon see a blessed change. <laughs> Which way do you vote, Matthew? I vote conservative. Then I'm a conservative, too. I'm glad, because Gil, I mean, some of the boys at school are grits. Ruby Gillis says when a man is courting, he always has to agree with a girl's mother in religion and her father in politics. Ruby Gillis knows all about courting because she has three older sisters. Did you ever go courting, Matthew? No, I don't know as I have. Never, ever, ever? Why ever not? Well, I couldn't do it without talking to a girl. Well, I'm sure there were many broken hearts as a result. Oh, Ruby Gillis says when she grows up, she wants to have a line of bows on a string and make them crazy for her. I'd rather have one in his rightful mind. There are some things in this world that even I cannot hope to understand. Well, I don't know if I can comprehend all of them either. My little sister's awful sick with the croup, and Mary just babysitting, and she doesn't know what to do. And we can't get word to mother and father because they're at the rally still. Don't worry, Diana. Matthew will get the doctor. We're such kindred spirits. I can read his thoughts. Uh, Dr. Blair's at the rally too. Oh, I'm awful scared. Baby can't breathe. Get my coat, Diana. <laughs> Stop crying, Diana. I know exactly what to do for the group. Ipecac is an expectorant. <laughs> Mrs. Ham has three sets of twins. All had group regularly, Diana. And it was me that treated them. Bad, but I've seen worse. Put some wood in the stove, Mary Joy, and boil some water. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but you might have thought of that before if you had any imagination. Okay. Come in, Diana, get a fresh change of clothes, and I'll keep administering the cat. <laughs> Let's give it to the last.
to the Ipecac. Mary Jo, look after the water. We'll take you to the master plaster. Gave her every last drop of Ipecac. But it wasn't until she coughed up the phlegm that she really began to improve. <sighs> you must imagine my relief, Doctor. Some things cannot be expressed in words. Would have been too late by the time I got here. You saved this little baby's life. I can't go to school. Just couldn't keep my eyes open. But I hate to stay at home. Gil will get ahead. Get up. Morning. Afternoon's more like it, Anne. You've slept the day away. Oh, no one's ever been more entitled to it, I hear. Did you meet the Prime Minister? What does he look like? Well, he certainly didn't become Prime Minister on account of his looks, but he's a fine speaker. Shook my hand. How exciting. I can just imagine the thrill of the rally with all of those people. Mrs. Barry was over here before begging to see you, but I wasn't about to wake you. You're invited to dinner. I should imagine humble pie is on the menu. Marilla, may I go right now? I am aching to see Diana. I'm so ashamed, Elle. You saved my baby's life. I harbor no hard feelings towards you, Mrs. Berry. But I hope you believe me once and for all that I never meant to intoxicate Diana. Of course I believe you, child. I'm so sorry I ever doubted you. Mother says you can come with us to the Christmas ball at Carmody. And we'd be honored if you'd stay the night with Diana as well. It's a very special occasion, and you would be our guest of honor. You can calm down because you're not going. For a woman so adamantly against currant wine, I'm surprised she's allowing Diana to go. All is for adults, not children. But Marilla, it's Christmas. The minister's going to be there. He's giving an address, and that's almost the same as a sermon. You heard what I said, and you know what I meant by it. There'll be plenty of balls when you're older. But I was invited to spend the night. I'm to be the guest of honor. Ah, oh, well, it's just an honor you'll have to forego, eh? Now off to bed. This is a wound I shall bear forever. Good night. You'd have been proud of her presence of mind the way she saved that berry baby. Why don't you let her go? Remember Matthew, who we agreed would be raising her? Huh. Mrs. Barry just wants to ease her conscience, and I'm not going to allow it. And no amount of huffing and puffing from you is going to change my mind. You'd let her go to the moon if she had the notion. Well, I don't approve of balls. 
Just fill her head with nonsense. Fact is, Morella, you never went to a ball. Fact is, this whole idea's got you scared to death. That little girl ought to have all the kindness we can give her. We got no call to raise her as cheerless as we was. And it ain't interfering to have an opinion. Besides, it's Christmas. You ought to let her go. This is all Matthew's doing, though. I wash my hands of it. If you get overheated and catch pneumonia, blame Matthew. Marilla, I dreamt last night that I arrived at the ball in puff sleeves and everyone was overcome by my regal entrance. Regal, my eye. You're dripping dirty, greasy water all over my clean floor. And if I have to listen to any more of this, I'll just change my mind. That's what I'll do. Got any, uh, do you have any garden rakes? Well, now, we don't carry garden rakes in the store in December, but I'll check upstairs. We may have one or two in storage. The very last one. Oh, that's, that's nice. Will there be anything else, Mr. Cuthbert? Well, uh, since you suggested, uh, uh, I might want to uh, look at some hayseed. Oh, we don't carry hayseed till spring, Mr. Cuthbert. Oh, certainly, of course. Oh, that'll be 75 cents for the rake, Mr. Cuthbert. Uh, while I'm here, uh, I might want to look at, uh, it wouldn't be too much trouble. Yes. Sugar. Sugar? Some sugar. Oh, white or brown? Oh, uh, what would you say? Well, we have some nice brown sugar in stock, Mr. Cuthbert. How much would you like? Uh, would 20 pounds be enough? Yes, I'm sure 20 pounds will be enough. Mm hmm That'll be one dollar. I need a dress with puffed sleeves. Puffed sleeves? Bram. Oh, land sakes, Mr. Cuthbert. Why didn't you say so in the first place? Now, you just come with me to the window. Brown sugar, indeed. I knew Matthew was up to some foolishness. Marilla, look at the puffs. They're ridiculous. You'll have to turn sideways to get through the doors. This can't be real. I hope you're satisfied, young lady. I don't want you strutting around here vain as a peacock, so now you go upstairs and take that off. I have to thank Matthew. Well, 
20 pounds of brown sugar. I should have waited till Christmas, but I thought you might want to work to the ball. Don't you like it? Like it? It's more exquisite than any dress I could ever have imagined. Puff sleeves. Puffiest in the world. You were a man of impeccable taste, Matthew. I don't want to get your dress dirty. <laughs> everyday life forever. Three years, I'm gonna wear my hair on Alice Bell. She's only 17 and I think she looks ridiculous. I'm going to wait until I'm 18. My, my. Doesn't Gilbert look dashing tonight? Gilbert? I hadn't noticed him. It's too bad you've been so awful to him. He might have asked you to dance. If I wanted him to ask me, which I don't. He certainly would. Gilbert Blythe would stand on his head for me if I asked him to. Oh, he looked right at you again, Anne. I bet you couldn't get him to dance with you. All right, Diana, if you insist. Good to see you, Rebecca. I'm your brother, anyway. Good evening, Gilbert Blythe. Tell your brother I'll be seeing him at the toboggan party. A glass of punch. Thank you. Diana! You look wonderful tonight. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too, Gilbert. How could you wish that person a Merry Christmas? I gather that person didn't ask you to dance after all. Well, will you give me the pleasure instead? Thank you. I believe I will. romantic gesture would be utterly beyond his imagination. <laughs> well, then who? Josie Pye? A secret admirer, obviously. <laughs> Spare bedroom. Oh, it's not exciting. All right, then. I'll race you to see who gets the warm side of the bed. <laughs>
the meaning of this? Aunt Josephine, Mother said you weren't coming until tomorrow. Is that any reason to try to kill me in my sleep? Diana Barry, you are the worst behaved girl I have ever known. Your parents will certainly hear about this outrage. It's all my fault, ma'am. It was my idea to race. And we didn't know you were in here. Honestly, we didn't. Please don't tell Mother Aunt Joe. We're terribly sorry. I most certainly will tell her. She'll want to know the reason why I've changed my mind about the music lessons I was going to pay for. You need a few lessons in behavior more than in music, young lady. Now get out of here and let a poor old woman get some sleep. This is really dreadful, Anne. Oh. I've always wanted music lessons. She's the only one in the family who's rich enough to pay for them. Explain tomorrow. Don't worry, Diana. She'll probably leave in a big huff first thing in the morning. I don't care. She's only father's great aunt. We've never been close. What? Come to finish the job? Sorry, I startled you, ma'am. Who are you? Anne of Green Gables. And I've come to confess. Confess what? I'm not interested in the confessions of assassins who masquerade as little girls. It was all my doing, Miss Barry. Diana would never think of such a thing as racing to a bed and jumping on it. She's far too ladylike, whereas I am merely an orphan who doesn't know any better. So I think you ought to forgive Diana and let her have her music lessons back. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea what it's like to be wakened from the few hours of precious sleep granted an old woman in a strange bed by two ferocious wild girls landing on her head? I don't know. I can imagine it must have been terrifying in the extreme. And if you had any imagination, you could put yourself in our place. I haven't been in your place for 47 years. Thank you very much. Don't you have any imagination, Miss Barry? My age, imagination is a threat to life. Well, we honestly didn't know you were in there. And you scared us half to death. You should just imagine how exciting it was going to be for me to sleep in a spare bedroom, reserved for important company such as yourself. As it was, I had to sleep with Minnie May, and you don't know how she kicks. Mine was the sleep of the bitterly disappointed Miss Berry. I was forced to lie awake all night with the knowledge that I had cost Diana her career as a world-famous concert pianist. I suppose your claim to sympathy is as valid as mine. Do you know what I am composing here, Anne of Green Gables? Sure I don't, Miss Berry. It's a note expressing my outrage to Diana's parents. Trouble is, I don't feel outraged anymore. So, what do you suggest? Perhaps if Diana apologized, which she's too frightened to do at this moment. I have a better idea. Suppose I reinstate her music lessons in exchange for... You coming to visit me in Charlottetown on occasion. Me, Miss Barry? Yes. You, Anne of Green Gables. Diana can come along as well. You amuse me. And precious little in this world amuses me at my age. You seem a very interesting old lady to me. You're not an old ogre at all, are you? I, I didn't mean that. Excuse me, Miss Barry. I most certainly am an old ogre. And don't you let on any different. Will you come and see me? Then go tell Diana she can be a concert pianist after all. Thank you, Miss Barry. 
We appreciate you making up your mind so swiftly. Good day, Anne girl. You wouldn't think so to look at her, but she is definitely a kindred spirit, Diana. One for you and one for the Anne girl. I want to become better acquainted with you both. If you come to town for a visit, I will put you up in my very sparest of spare rooms. Yours very truly, Aunt Josephine Barry. You know, Diana, kindred spirits aren't as scarce as I used to think. Do you intend to daydream during the Charlottetown exam? Five minutes, class. Well, don't worry. In two days, we'll all be over. This is one of those rare moments when not even my imagination can solve my anxiety. Diana, so you've come to see me at last, you Anne girl. <laughs> Mercy me, you're both so much better looking than you used to be. I'm sure Diana is. My hair is still red. Come in, come in, John. Take the bags right upstairs. Wipe your feet. And Joe. You must be tired from your trip. Nancy will prepare your bath and look after you. I suppose you want to cram for your exam tonight. No. Miss Stacy made me promise not to open a book, so I won't get the jitters. In that case, we can have a leisurely dinner after you've freshened up. And following your exam tomorrow, I've planned a tremendous surprise. Nancy, tell John that I will have my tea with him in the palm room. she was this rich. No wonder she has so little imagination. It's the one consolation about being poor. You have to dream all this up. I wish I could go with you and help you somehow, Anne. Don't make me nervous. I'm trying to imagine away this horrible fluttery feeling around my heart. I have faith in you. You'll pass all right. I'd rather not pass at all than come out somewhere in the middle. Matthew and Marilla, Miss Stacy, everyone has such great hopes for me. You know, it would be such a disgrace if... Gilbert came first. I suppose I'd settle for beating Gilbert Blythe if I had to. Just keep thinking about Gilbert then. Yes. Gilbert. Please do not touch your papers until all the examinations have been distributed, or they will be discounted completely. You may now begin. Oh, a 
one awful moment, I felt exactly like I did three years ago when I asked Marilla if I was to stay at Green Gables. <laughs> you had me worried there for a moment. <laughs> I could see you turning green. <laughs> oh, but I knew you'd fall through. Well, pass or fail, I'm going to miss you tremendously, Miss Stacy. I want to wish you all the luck in the world, Anne Shirley. If anyone deserves to be successful, it's you. I'll be watching out for you, even from Halifax. So you really are going to leave Avonlea? I have my own little set of troubles. Oh, nothing to worry about. Remember, true friends are always together in spirit. Thank you, Miss Stacy, for giving all of us the chance to make something of ourselves. Someone else wants to say goodbye. I want to remind you of something you once told me. Tomorrow is always fresh. With no mistakes in it. I was born for city life. What's your opinion, Anne? I hadn't thought seriously about it until now. I think I would probably come to the conclusion that I'd like it for a while. But in the end, I'd still prefer the sound of the wind in the firs across the brook more than the tinkling of crystal. <laughs> this, Miss Berry. <laughs> Madam Selitsky had a definitive alabaster brow, Diana. Did you see Alice Bell there, parading around like she had an alabaster brow? <laughs> if I had Alice Bell's crooked nose, I wouldn't... Oh, no, I shouldn't have said that. That's uncharitable. I was comparing it to my own nose, and that is vanity. Someone complimented me on my nose long ago, and I'm afraid I've thought about it far too much ever since. <laughs> I ought to hire you as my court jester, Anne, girl. I wasn't meaning to be funny. Well, I hope you both enjoyed the matinee. Oh, immensely. And you, Anne? Unforgettably. Then you must stay with me when you come back and study. Maybe I'll come stay with you, too. You'd both be welcome. I haven't had so much fun since... Well, never mind how long since. I thought Marilla Cuthbert was an old fool when I heard that she'd adopted a little orphan girl. But I see now which of us was the old fool. Bye, Aunt Jo. Bye, girl. Bye. Bye, Mr. Barry. Thank you. Thank you for everything. It was lovely having you here. Bye. Hello there, Gil. You on your way home, too? Oh, yes, sir. Well, I wish we could offer you a ride. <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. I'm meeting Moody at the station. And I wish you luck on the exam. I hope you come in first. You've, you've worked hard. Thank you. But I'm sure the first will go to you. Well, I guess we'll see you, won't we? You're the only one who has golden hair. I couldn't lie there and pretend I was dead. I'd die of fright, honest. 
You be Elaine, Anne. This is your idea. A red-haired person cannot play the lily maid. Tennyson would never approve. Your complexion's just as fair as Ruby's. And anyway, your hair's darker now than just plain old red. Really? I'd say it's definitely auburn. And that's sort of close to blonde. Well, all right. It isn't authentic. <laughs> She really looks dead. I'm frightened. Mrs. Lynn says acting is a sin. Ruby, keep quiet. You're spoiling the effect. Besides, this is hundreds of years before Mrs. Lynn was born. Diana, you arrange all of this. It's ridiculous for Elaine to be talking when she's supposed to be dead. All right. Jane, the flowers. Now she's ready. And for gosh sake, smile a little. It says here, Elaine lay as though she smiled. That's better. All right, ladies, let us send her to a watery grave. is on her if she stay to look down on Camelot. And at the closing of the day, the broad stream bore her far away. And as the boat had wound along, they heard her singing her last song, The Lady of Shalott. Shirley, what in heck are you doing? Fishing for lake trout. For lake trout. No, I was in Diana's skiff, but it sprang a leak and I had to climb onto the piling or sink. Now, if you'll be so kind as to row me to the landing. Ah, uh, I see. Well, then the fact is, I've rescued you. Help is on the way, and I was calmly waiting for it. You're most welcome. I am grateful for your assistance, Mr. Blythe. Even though it was not required. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to find my friends. They are likely overcome with fear for my life. Well, Anne, wait, wait a minute. I was just down at the post office to see if the Queen's results had been printed. 
Congratulations on coming first, Gilbert. I'm sure you're very proud of your achievements. Wait a minute, you ninny. We tied for first place. You and I. I figured you'd have it for sure. We all passed. Our entire class. First? Out of all 200? I'm just sorry you had to share with me. Never expected to beat you. Can we be friends? This childishness has gone on long enough, don't you think? The fact that you rescued me unnecessarily hardly wipes out past wrongs. Look, I'm sorry I ever said anything about your hair. I have no idea how sorry. It was so long ago. Aren't you ever going to forgive me? You hurt my feelings excruciatingly. I only said it because I... because I wanted to meet you so much. Why did you turn your back on me at the Christmas ball? Man, that was over a year ago. It was a deliberate humiliation. And I knew exactly what you were thinking too, Anne Shirley. You and Diana Barry. Look, can we be friends now? Why don't you figure it out? If you're so clever. Anne, wait a minute. Everyone will think I'm drowned! climbed underneath the bridge. And Gilbert Blythe came along and rowed me to shore. Oh, how romantic. Of course you'll speak to him from now on. Of course I will not. I don't ever want to hear the word romance again, Jane Andrews. It was easy enough in Camelot, but it certainly isn't appreciated in Avonlea. Oh, I'm sorry I frightened everyone so. It was all my fault. Well, I'm sure that John Barry will be pleased to hear that he no longer owns a dory, Anne Shirley. Oh, you do beat all, girl. When are you going to have any sense? I think my prospects are brightening. I just saw the path list for Queens. For better or for worse, I tied with Gilbert Blythe for first. First? Oh, Anne, you must be so proud. I must say you've done pretty well for yourself, Anne. Well, I guess she has done well, Marilla. Far be it for me to be backward when praise is due. You're a credit to us all, and we're all proud of you. Oh. Good afternoon, Miss Cuthbert. Good afternoon. I'm Gilbert Blythe. Yes. You've grown into quite a young man. So you must be very proud of Anne. It's a real challenge keeping up with her at school. Yes. Matthew and I are both proud. She has the talent to make something of herself. But she's still very young, Gilbert. Good afternoon. Afternoon, ma'am. So what are you going to recite, Anne? I've decided to give The Highwayman. It's very pathetic. Laura Spencer's giving a comic recitation, but I prefer to make people cry. Are you nervous? A little bit, even though I've stood out in public so often. But I feel very well prepared, and that helps. Well, this organdy will look elegant under all the electric lights at the White Sands Hotel. Oh, Mother tried to convince me to audition for a violin solo. Can you imagine? I mean, I haven't picked up a bow in three years. The Charlottetown Hospital is a worthy cause and all, but I am not prepared to suffer humiliation for it. <laughs> We're all amateurs. They may be very sorry they've asked any of us to do it when it's all over. Oh, hardly the case with you, Anne. After standing first at Queen's, you can do no wrong in this community. Someone ought to tell that to Marilla. Well, Mr. Cuthbert is sure proud. He plunks down his money awful quick these days for anything I tell him is pretty and fashionable. Alice Lawson, you devil. Don't you go abusing Matthew's generosity to me. Oh, you do have good taste, though. I'll see you at the concert. Oh, 
Hello, Ed. Whoa. Can I offer you a ride home? You promised we were going to be friends, remember? Well, all right, then. It is rather awkward with all these. It was good of you to stop. Seems I'm developing quite a habit of getting you out of awkward situations. I've thought a lot about what happened at the bridge, Gilbert. What I mean to say is, it was very rude of me to just run off like that. But I was very overwrought over learning my score. Our score. I mean, I wasn't myself. That's all right. Life's too short to hold grudges anyway. It's valiant of you to say so. You'll go far with that kind of attitude. Do you know what you're going to study at Queen's yet, Anne? I intend on taking my teacher's license in one year, instead of two, at Miss Stacy's suggestion. Gee, I always imagined you'd have a career on the stage. Well, I think you'd make a swell actress. Especially as the Lily Mate. I hear you're giving the highwayman at the White Sands recital. My life is an open book, I see. Who told you that? Well, I have a little confession to make. Well, I was just the Lawsons myself, and Alice told me you were walking home. Oh. I'm going to try to get you an encore while you're up there, so make sure you have a second selection ready. Nobody's going to encore me. Well, I would. Especially if I had the honor of escorting you to the concert. Um, I don't know. I promised the Berries I'd go with them, but... I think you're old enough to make up your own mind, Anne. I've always been old enough to make up my own mind. Very well, then, Gilbert. I'd be pleased to accept your invitation. C uh, could you let me off at the corner, please? I'm going to take a shortcut and show Diana what I bought. Matthew say something. She was holding his hand. She'd have to hold his hand if he was helping her out of the buggy. What was she doing in that buggy? Well, nothing worth all this fussing. She's just a child, Matthew. She doesn't know what she's doing. Hello, everyone. Sorry I was late. I stopped over at Diana's, and she just loves the material you chose, Matthew. And Shirley. I've just been informed by a reliable source that you were seen at Avonlea Crossroads in a buggy with a young man. Morella. I... He only offered me a ride home. He was just being friendly. Not according to Rachel Lind. Rachel Lind? Yes. Rachel Lind saw you. Morella, she ain't done nothing wrong. Matthew, remember... In the beginning, I told you not to put your oar in. I'm sorry I lost my temper. I never meant anything to come of all this. And nothing has, as yet. Anne, you've changed so much. Grown so tall and so stylish. You don't belong in Avonlea anymore. I get lonely just thinking about it going off into the world to make your way and you don't want to make any ties here that you might come to regret later. Doesn't matter where I go or how I change, I'll always be your Anne, Anne of Green Gables.
I want you to give this to him. Dear Gilbert, I regret that I'll be unable to attend the White Sands concert with you. Sincerely, Anne Shirley. Why won't you go with them? Plenty of reasons why I won't go. I only accepted in the first place because he dared me. Well, I think you owe him an explanation. I hope you don't ruin your dress driving there in the dust. And it's far too thin for this damp weather. I'm sorry I ever agreed to it. Thank you, Matthew. Well, there's no use in saying anything to you, Matthew, but those pearls look absolutely ridiculous. I don't know where you get these silly ideas. Matthew is proud of the way I look. Anne! They're here. Thank you, Marilla and Matthew. I mustn't keep them waiting. Now, mind you keep your dress clear of the wheel. Good luck, Anne. I'll be watching for you both. Gilbert gave me this in return for your note. It's coming to watch you anyway. I didn't want Jane or Gabby brother to see you. your own opinion. It would have been easier if you had told me in person. I hope you can still consider me a friend. Sincerely, Gilbert Blythe. I won't be accused of being a coward, Diana. He doesn't understand. Tell him I'll speak to him the first minute I can steal away tonight. Calm down, Anne. I'm so ashamed. I can't go up on that stage. I can't. I'll be merciless if I fail. You've never failed at anything, Anne Shirley. Go on. Ho, ho, the breakers roared at daybreak. On the bleak sea beach, a fisherman stood aghast to see the form of a maiden fair lashed close to a drifting mast. The salt sea was frozen on her breast, the salt tears in her eyes. And he saw her hair, like the brown seaweed, on the billows fall and rise. Such was the wreck of the Hesperus, in the midnight and the snow. God save us all from a death like this, on the reef of Norman's woe. has just completed a European tour. Oh, she's a prodigious talent. I was moved beyond words. On behalf of Charlottetown Hospital, I would like to offer our indebtedness to Mrs. Amelia Evans for gracing us with such a stirring performance in support of today's benefit. Pin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to present one of Avonlea's most celebrated students who achieved the highest standing in the recent entrance examinations to Queen's Academy, Miss Anne Shirley. It will be amusing to see what uh, arises from the local amateurs after this.
The wind was a torrent of darkness among the gusty trees. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. And the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. One kiss, my bonny sweetheart. I'm after a prize tonight. But I shall return with the yellow gold before the morning light. Yet if they press me sharply and harry me through the day, look for me by moonlight. Watch for me by moonlight. I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. Back he spurred like a madman, shouting a curse to the sky, with the white road smoking behind him, and his rapier brandished high. Blood red were his spurs of the golden noon. Wine red was his velvet coat when they shot him down on the highway down like a dog on the highway. And he lay in his blood on the highway with a bunch of lace at his throat. Oh. Here you were splendid. Go back. Go back. They're uncalling you. Okay, go back. was magnificent as Mrs. Evans. She's a professional. Well, I overheard you that little bit of young man over course. there asking who the girl well, on the platform was with the lovely the Titian hair. Whatever that means. It's plain red. It's just a fancy way of saying it. Well, he thought you were wonderful anyway. You'll forgive me for stealing her away again, won't you? There are so many people waiting to meet our young Miss Shirley. Excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, but there is someone I absolutely must speak with. I'll return right away, I promise. Very well, dear, but hurry up. I have important people waiting. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to talk to a man. Blame me if you want. It's all right, Diana. Some things just aren't meant to be. Did you see all those diamonds? I wish I were rich and I could spend my whole summer at a hotel, eating ice cream and chicken salad. You know something, Diana? We are rich. We have 16 years to our credit. And we both have wonderful imaginations. We should be as happy as queens. Look at that. You couldn't enjoy its loveliness anymore if you had ropes of diamonds. I don't know about that. I'm content with my string of pearls. Matthew gave them to me with as much love as ever went at any of those stuffy women's jewels. I am happy, Diana, and nothing is going to hold me back. Hurry up, Anne. Do you think the train's going to wait for you? No. I'll take it, Matthew. It'll be easier if I go quickly by myself. Getting emotional over nothing. Nothing. You both mean everything to me. All this foolishness. You might as well kiss him, too.
afraid for her, Matthew. She'll be gone so long. <laughs> She'll get terrible lonesome. You mean we'll get terrible lonesome? I can't help wishing that she'd stayed a little girl. Miss Spencer made a lucky mistake, I guess. It wasn't luck, it was Providence. He knew we needed her. Even with her queer little ways. I loved her for them. I like people who make me like them. Saves me so much trouble forcing myself to like them. Oh, but I'd be a much happier woman if you'd stay at Beechwood with me. There's no other place I'd rather be, Miss Barry. I know it's impractical. You need to be near the school. The lady who runs this boarding house is a gentlewoman of reduced circumstances. You'll be quite safe. Here we are, Peter. Miss Barry said you're of a creative turn of mind, so I've given you my best room looking out over the street. Thank you, I'm sure. Cheer up now. I've had dozens of students here and not lost one of them yet. If there's anything you want, just let me know. Thank you. Cheer up. I don't want to cheer up. I'd rather just be miserable. Those of you that have elected to complete the program for a teacher's license in one year instead of two have a difficult struggle ahead of you. But you're here because we know you're capable of doing it. These first two weeks will be a probationary period in which you can decide whether you really want to complete the program in a single year. In that sense, these first two weeks will be the most important you spend at Queens. Bear that in mind. And Shirley! You look positively ill. Whenever your nose and eyes get red, you just seem red all over. Tell me, how are the first year students doing? Our French professor's a dream. He has the cutest mustache. Come for lunch and I'll tell all. I'm meeting Jane and Ruby and some of the others. Thank you, but I have other business to attend to. Gilbert won't be there if that's what's worrying you. Whatever do you mean? Gilbert Blythe is a rake. And after his insulting behavior at the White Sands concert, I've decided to completely ignore him. Besides, there are far more dashing young men around here anyway. I'm amazed that Gilbert could even insult you. Like, I don't know anyone. I wish you people had decided to go into second. Second? I'll be lucky if I pass first. I don't care if I don't pass. My father can afford to send me back. You know, Anne, Frank Stockley told me that the graduate who receives the highest mark in English Lit this year wins the Avery Scholarship, $250 a year for four years. Are you sure? The Board of Governors is announcing it tomorrow. It'll be you for sure, Anne. I don't know. This is a much bigger pond we're swimming in now than in Avonlea. You two goody-goodies control yourselves. There's a lot more to do around here than keeping your nose in the books. <laughs> Stop it. So you have been here one week, and already you're planning to take an arts degree from Redmond College. I fully intend to win that Avery scholarship if hard work can do it. I never knew a girl with such ambition. Except perhaps myself. But my ambition was for money. God knows I've succeeded. I've never really considered money. Probably just as well. Though I can hardly believe I'm saying so. Wealth can be very empty when you don't have someone to share it with. But by the time I realized that, no one would have me. Except men who wanted my money even more than I did. You aren't lonely, though, are you? Not with you in town. Now tell me, have you made all kinds of interesting friends your first week here, then? 
I have a small circle of friends, but no bosom friends, mind you. And what about young men in that circle of friends? I've become too practical for romance, like Marilla. I shall probably end up an old maid. <laughs> I didn't mean that. It isn't all bad. A married woman could never be as cantankerous as I am free to be. But it's not a circumstance I'd recommend for you. Make a little room in your plans again for romance, Anne girl. All the degrees and scholarships in the world can't make up for the lack of it. May I leave this for Gilbert Blythe? You can take it to him yourself, miss. He's across the hall. Thank you. <laughs> Can't you just picture Gilbert? Emily Clay, winner of the Avery Scholarship. <laughs> Don't be too sure. <laughs> Dear Marilla and Matthew, It hardly seems possible that the term is almost over. I've become so preoccupied with my work, I've almost lost track of time. But here I am with exams looming up before me, and for the time being, they are all there is in the world. But, as Rachel Lynn used to say, <laughs> the sun will go on rising and setting whether I fail in geometry or not. I think I'd rather it didn't go on if I failed. I miss you both very, very much. Yours lovingly with all my heart, Anne. She sounds unhappy. Oh, cheer up, Anne. You have to win at least one of the awards. I'm not sure I care anymore. It's a fine attitude after all the work you've put in. I have no hope for the Avery. Everyone has practically said that Emily Clay is getting it. You'll probably get the gold medal then. Well, I'm not going to look at the bulletin board. I'm going to go straight to the girls' dressing room. I'll come find you. If I fail, just say so, Jane. Don't break it to me gently. And don't sympathize. of mint delicious. I can't bear the thought of leaving here again. Four long years. I'll probably be old and gray when you do come back, Anne. More likely married to a dashingly handsome young man. And too busy with babies to be interested in your former bosom friend. Such as who? Moody? I'll pray that someone wonderful comes to Avonlea and sweeps you off your feet. Gilbert's getting the Avonlea school, you know. He isn't going to college? His father can't afford to send him, so he's going to earn his way. Did you ever explain to him? Some books are better left on the shelf. I wish him luck, though. He's a determined young man. Then as far as you're concerned, he's fair game. Why, Diana Berry, if you were interested in Gilbert Blythe, why didn't you ever say so? Because I thought my bosom friend was in love with him. In love with Gilbert Blythe? Me? Yes, you. Gilbert did say that being smart was better than being pretty. Good night, dear sweet Diana. Good night, Anne.
help you! What is it? I'm alright. Please, Matthew, you need help. I've got to get a doctor. I worked hard on my life. I'd rather drop in the harness. I got old. I never noticed. I've been the boy you sent for. I could have spared you in so many ways. I never wanted a boy. I only wanted you from the first day. Don't ever change. I love my little girl. I'm so proud of my little girl. <laughs> you don't. stood here in silent prayer at Matthew Cuthbert's grave and struggled, each of us, to see the meaning in his life. But the mystery of death prevails. All we know is that we are troubled in our hearts at this evidence that death comes to all of us. In the end, all we know is that we loved him and we commend his soul to Jesus. I'm very sorry for your loss. Thank you, Gilbert Blythe. Bring him back. Your arms around me, Marilla, for a little while. Tears don't hurt like the ache does. I know I've been strict with you. I don't know what I'd do if you'd never come. But you mustn't think that I don't love you as much as Matthew did. It's never been easy for me to say the things from my heart, but I like my own flesh and blood now. Oh, it's not right to cry, so God knows best. Oh, but he was always 
such a kind brother to me. We have each other now. Morning, Miss Cuthbert. And how is Green Gables holding up these days? Oh, pretty well. I haven't seen you around these parts much lately. Oh, well. Business and comedy takes all my time. <laughs> you know what I mean. This sure is a lovely piece of countryside. It is that. People in Avonlea say that it's the prettiest acreage on the North Shore. Matthew kept this place up impeccably. You don't want to let it get run down at all. Decreases the value. Now may be a good time to consider selling if you want to get the highest value for your property. Well, I can't deny that the thought has crossed my mind. You could certainly retire on what I'm prepared to offer you for the place. Thank you, Mr. Sadler. What did Mr. Sadler want? He once offered to buy Green Gables, and he's still interested. Buy Green Gables? Marilla! I don't know what else to do. My eyesight is getting weaker. Dr. Spencer says that if the headaches persist, I might lose it completely. What if I can't run this place? Rachel has kindly offered to let me live with her. But you can't sell Green Gables. And I would go crazy if there was trouble and I was all alone here. I'm sorry that you won't have a home to come to on your vacations. <laughs> I never thought I'd live to see the day when I would sell this place. But we'll survive somehow. You won't have to stay here alone. I'm not going to Redmond. What do you mean? I'm not going to take that scholarship. I've already decided, but I hadn't told you yet. Mr. Barry said he'd rent our fields next year, and I'm going to take the school at Carmody. They need a teacher, and I'm sure they'd be glad to have me. I can drive back and forth until the weather gets bad, and then I'll board and come home on the weekends. I won't let you sacrifice your education for me. I won't allow it, Anne Shirley. I am going to do it. I'm 16 years old, and just as stubborn as you are. <laughs> Oh, you blessed girl. I know I ought to stick to it and make you go to college, but I've learned better than to stand in your way. Gilbert Blythe will be teaching too, won't he? Yes. What a nice-looking young boy he is. He looks a lot like his father did at that age. We used to be real good friends, he and I. People called him my beau. And what happened? We quarreled, and I wouldn't forgive him when he asked me to. I wanted to after a while, but I was stubborn. And I wanted to punish him first. He never came back. I always felt rather sorry. I sort of wished that I'd forgiven him when I had a chance. Glad to hear you've come to your senses, Anne. Teacher's course one year, and off to Redmond the next. I don't believe in women going off to college with the men, cramming their heads full of Latin and Greek. I'm doing my course as my correspondence, Rachel. With all the work you have to do, Teaching over at Carmody and looking after Green Gables? Marilla, talk some sense to the girl. Oh, mind your own business for once, Rachel, and leave her alone. And thrives on study.
Well, Marilla, she'll kill herself. That's all there is to it. Pride goes before the fall. Taking a shortcut, Mr. Blythe. Miss Cuthbert said I could find you here. Open it. <clears throat> we would be prepared to agree to your proposal to engage Miss Shirley under contract for one year in the post of teacher at Avonlea Public School. That's your post. Well, I, I took the liberty of speaking to the trustees about an exchange. I'll be getting Harmody, and, and you can stay at Green Gables. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. But you'd have to pay for your board. You never save enough for college. You can't... I'll save enough. Besides, I'm... I'm keeping up my studies by correspondence. So am I. Thank you for giving up the school for me, Gilbert. It's very good of you. I want you to know that I really appreciate it. I figure you can give me a hand with my work and we'll call it a fair exchange. Aren't you worried? I'm liable to break another slate over your head. I'm worried I might break one over yours. <laughs> 